Good morning. This is Pastor Dennis Roser. Welcome to Divine Service at St. John's Lutheran Church. The members of St. John's are committed to sharing the good news of Christ Jesus, who was crucified in the place of sinners, so that everyone who believes and trusts in him will not perish, but receive as a free gift everlasting life. St. John's is located at 1000 Bluff Street in Beloit. Our telephone number is 608-362-8595. Please visit our website at www.stjohnsbeloit.com. We are a member congregation of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. Our Sunday morning worship service is held every week at 9 o'clock a.m. And we invite you to join us and receive the gifts that God delights in giving you through His Son. Today's program is given to the glory of God by Judy Niedermeyer in loving memory of her husband Roger. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept the record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking His grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in His mercy, has given His Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, through the humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people, rescued from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal joys. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our gospel lesson is taken from Luke. Chapter 24, verses 36 through 49. As the disciples were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish. And he took it and ate before them. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ 
should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Together we confess our faith with the whole Church of Christ through the Church's Confession, the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. lesson this morning, 
St. Luke records the giving of the Great Commission. Jesus' mandate, his command to the church in every time and every place that forgiveness, well, I should say first, that repentance and forgiveness are to be proclaimed throughout all the world in his name to the ends of the earth, beginning from Jerusalem, but certainly not ending there. To the ends of the earth, repentance and the forgiveness of sins are to be proclaimed to everyone everywhere. It is for this reason that the mission statement of St. John's Church is sharing the good news of forgiveness and eternal life through Jesus Christ. Congregations do not have the liberty to develop mission statements that are anything than what the Great Commission mandates. This was Jesus' commissioning statement for the church. But of course, how we articulate that commission differs from congregation to congregation as our con contexts differ. But ours is simply sharing the good news of forgiveness and eternal life through Jesus Christ. For some of us, maybe this sounds easy. Talking to others about Jesus. Letting them know that they have a Savior who is Christ the Lord, who has died in their place, answered for their sins. But for many people, this can feel very daunting. We think to ourselves, what shall we say? How do we begin? Who do we talk to? How does this all work? And how do I know that I am really up to the challenge? Many Christians do not share their faith, not because they do not have faith, nor that they are uninterested in sharing their faith, but they simply feel ill-equipped to do so. We think of the disciples and we consider them as rock stars of the Christian faith. Those who went everywhere telling the good news about Jesus. But it didn't begin like that. That first Easter in the evening, we find them in a room by themselves with other followers of Jesus, having the doors locked fearing for their own safety. And Jesus appears in the midst of that huddle and he says to them, peace to you. And they were startled. And they were afraid. But Jesus, in addition to showing them his hands and his feet, gives them another proof that he is not some kind of ghost as they presume. He asks them, do you have anything here to eat? Someone goes to the refrigerator and they dig around and they find, you know, one of those cardboard boxes from Long John Silver, some leftover stuff, maybe a hush puppy or something. And they bring out to him a piece of broiled fish and right there in front of them, he takes and he eats it so that they can see that he's got a body. He's not some kind of ethereal ghost. He's got a body. He's a risen Christ. Having been crucified and killed, he is now raised as the fish stays inside of him as he eats it. And even though... Luke tells us they were still disbelieving and marveling. They knew it was Jesus. He reassures them. He says, look, this is what I was trying to tell you. That it was necessary that I should be handed over 
that I should suffer under the hands of sinful men and be killed. But on the third day I shall rise. So that repentance and the forgiveness of sins may be proclaimed throughout the whole world. For you see, apart from his death and resurrection, you can announce repentance. But where shall the forgiveness come from? We can never make up for our sins. We can never, because of our sins, be truly sorry and come to God in anything less than a self-serving way. But because of his death and resurrection, people are to be called to repentance so that they can hear the message that he has died in their place, answered for those sins, and they are forgiven. They receive in his name the full pardon and forgiveness of all of their sins. He says this was necessary in order that was that which was written in the scriptures. Because he says the law and the prophets and the Psalms. They didn't use the language of Old Testament in Jesus' day because there was not yet a New Testament. Jeremiah in chapter 31, verse 31, had announced that it was coming. When he says, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant or testament with the house of Israel and Judah. But it hasn't come yet. So there's no such phrase as Old Testament. But he says to them, that what was written in the scriptures might be fulfilled about me. I should suffer, be killed, and on the third day rise, and now you see it fulfilled. Jesus is moving them from being ill-equipped to share the good news of God to being those who are sent out ready to proclaim the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, all that he has done for them. But he tells them, remain here in the city until you are clothed from power on high. What he is saying is until the day of Pentecost, although he leaves them on the hook time-wise, he doesn't tell them on the day of Pentecost this will happen. But that's when it did. That the Holy Spirit would come upon them mightily, all 120 persons in that room, like the sound of a rushing wind. And then... They would have the power. Then they would be equipped to share this message, to truly be his missionaries, his witnesses. And so it is with us. You and I, in holy baptism, have received the indwelling of God's Holy Spirit. God dwells within us. And it is He alone who equips us to save this, to share, I should say, this life saving message with our neighbors. On our own, Jesus Himself tells His disciples, we can do nothing. But with Him, everything is possible through prayer, as St. Paul will remind us. And so it begins with prayer. In prayer, approaching God, asking for His insights, His leading, His direction, His carrying of the message, and always, always, always a return to Scripture. You saw how Jesus, He gives the disciples assurance that it is truly Him and that He is raised and then he leads them immediately back into the scriptures, the law, the prophets, the Psalms. And then he tells them the weight that the Holy Spirit might be coming upon them, for indeed he would be. And as you and I know, it was on the day of Pentecost, the 50th day, 
and only then are they sent out. The New Testament is consistent throughout and quite clear that those who live apart from Christ and die apart from Christ are in peril of eternal hell. And so the church is commissioned not simply to be a social organization paying attention to the things of God, but are to be the very places where people are baptized and nurtured in the Christian faith, equipped to be sent out to reach their neighbors. Whether we like it or not, there are people in each and every one of our lives for whom we may be the only person who can share this eternal life-giving message, this news. And don't let us think for a moment that because all of our friends are senior citizens, that we are retired, and there is no call to share that message. People who are in their 80s and their 90s, 150, need to hear this message. It is never too late. And so Jesus transforms us by this message, fills us with His Holy Spirit, and it is only then that we are sent out. And it is not for the sake of sharing an elaborate, complex message. It is not for the sake of confounding those who teach about evolution or any other message that contradicts Christianity. It is simply to introduce our neighbor, a relative, co-worker, friend, to the Christ who has died in their place, answered for their sins. They already have a Savior, but they need to know about Him and what He has done for them. And Jesus never asks us to share what we do not have. The fact that you are called to share this message is a reassurance that you have received the salvation that is offered to everyone who believes. In every time of doubt, in every time of fear and dread, as certainly the case for the disciples that evening, may you also experience the presence of the risen Christ as He comes to you in your prayers, in the reading, the studying, the hearing of His Word, and indeed, the sharing of the Holy Supper. As we gather for communion, it is in a very real sense to receive the full assurance of the forgiveness of our sins, no different from the assurance Jesus gave in showing His hands and His feet and eating the fish. But it is different in one way. As we share this supper, we receive the true body and the true blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who was given into death for our sins. In the name of Jesus, amen. Please join me in praying the prayer taught by the Savior. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory 
forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for listening today. And may the gifts of God in Christ Jesus be granted to you by his gracious will. Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever.